design consultancy called Therefore. Uh, business breaks down into pretty much three strategic pillars. We've got consultancy, which is uh, client-led, low risk for us. Uh, partnerships, where we share some of the risk, again, client-led. And ventures, where we sort of walk the talk, get behind our own product ideas. Um, you're about to see a screen grab of my iPhone home screen to show a journey that we took uh, through a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, happened about six months ago. Note the horrible uh, inbox. So I don't normally get that many uh, emails over a weekend. We did a crowdfunding campaign for a product uh, in one of our ventures, which was to develop a unique light. The, the light called, here we go, called Gravity Light, is designed for um, off-grid communities in the third world, and it's a realistic alternative to kerosene lighting. It has a revolutionary uh, kind of new approach to creating light by lifting a weight. It takes about three seconds to lift this weight, which very slowly falls to the ground, taking about 30 minutes to power a light all for free. It started as a brief from SolarAid, a charity looking at doing a low-cost uh, solar lantern, but due to the batteries, you, know, you need to store the energy from the sun in batteries. The batteries are the weak link in both longevity and cost. So rather than harvesting sunshine, we looked at harvesting gravity, and gravity light was born. Unfortunately, our funding then ran out, so we launched a campaign on uh, Indiegogo, we were set about to raise $55,000 for a 1,000-unit trial in multiple sites in the developing world. Uh, we ended up raising, as you can see, just shy of uh, $400,000. So how do you engage with the crowd? Uh, the upper slide here shows uh, a storyboard for our short movie pitch. Now, the movie is completely critical in uh, a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, so we planned it very carefully. We wanted to communicate a whole number of uh, different components, but ultimately it needed to be very blog friendly. I'll come back to that. So we, we wanted to show how we could improve life in the developing countries by replacing kerosene, which is extremely damaging. Um, we have a safe alternative, and we wanted to show this development journey, showing the real process we go through to, um, to successfully kind of execute this light. Well, this is a screen grab from day four, and by then we'd already hit our target. It's a 40-day campaign. Um, we could see that the, um, the get one, donate one model, which we had as a perk, was becoming hugely popular. I think people in the developed world wanted to have one in their shed so they could tell their neighbours and friends how they've contributed to changing the world. Again, beautifully powerful. And then due to the rapid interest on day four, within Indiegogo, our go-go factor, which you may hear about later, kicked in. So we were then promoted on the site itself, they mailed out our projects to people on their database, and suddenly things started to very quickly escalate. So this is a sort of map of um, the kind of global exposure we have with real people. These are people who make pledges to our campaign. And it's a fantastically empowering thing, I think, because although crowdfunding platforms are not shops, they do transform consumers potentially into well, what Alvin Toffler, I think, in the 80s, phrased prosumers, proactive consumers. Now, crowdfunding platforms are, are just so full of projects. Uh, it felt a bit, when we started the campaign, it's like entering a huge library and slipping your beautiful self-published book into the shelves and hoping people would read it. Well, of course, that's not possible. You have to really have to drive traffic to your own site. So we engaged heavily in social media. So when this guy, you might have heard of him, when he tweeted about our campaign just after Christmas, we were then... Uh, suddenly exposed to his um, 10 million followers. So focusing on the key influencers is a really important part of the social media campaign for projects on, on crowdfunding websites. Now, of course, every time we got featured, our exposure sort of escalated up and up and up. So if you see there on the left, that's <clears throat> it's probably a bit small, but millions of people and obviously time on the bottom axis. But So by the time Bill Gates tweeted about us, 
over Christmas period, we then were exposed to a cumulative exposure of like 24 million people, so rather successful. But it did lead us to change our strategy for the project, because initially it was a small focused trial in the developing world, and now we had literally thousands of lights to <laughs> fulfill. So we decided to delay our original launch date, because we wanted to make the light as good as it could possibly be in the time. And then we were very open to our contributors about the delay. Now, the delay received, well, let's say, a, a, a mixed response. Uh, and equally, we found this throughout the whole campaign. So at the very beginning, um, uh, someone posted, it's a scam. This light couldn't possibly work. It wasn't physically possible. And rather, jumping, rather than jumping in, we let it self-regulate. Someone then posted some calculations, and it was actually, if you can keep cool, it was really good. Another part of our campaign was to reach out to find companies that already operate in the developing world. And this is actually one of our guys, technical director, who's uh, out in Sri Lanka trying to connect with partners who know the local markets for the trials. We now have 48 trials going on over 25 countries. This is the final light which we'll be trialling. It has some intrinsic extra resilience, it's shockproof, it shows when it's overloaded. So pre-crowdfunding, we had this sort of sim simple conceptual question, is this light attractive in the developing world? And now with this funding and the great enthusiasm behind it, we know it is, but actually how attractive. So in essence, we are a startup. There's huge challenges ahead. How do we reach these uh, around 2 billion people who still use kerosene? Uh, obviously, we need funding to try to scale our project out to reach these people. We need to find local distribution networks to get lights to people. We know, need people who know how to operate and attach to these kind of people to be able to also spread the word so we can communicate uh, what we're doing with this project. And actually, to really make a difference to these communities, we have to make this light incredibly cheaply. It, they, they can't be expected to pay more than $10 for this. Um, again, a key challenge. So we know that as more products coming into the market um, requiring less power, that's a trend, less power to run them. Um, we're looking at innovative ways within our company to, to power and charge them in, in sort of simple ways. So we've created this company, Desawatt. Uh, go to our website, desawatt.org, to see what we're doing. And we're trying to do um, more with less. Thank you.